kicked off with a bang and it's only listen i only could do it one way i had to bring in the big dogs i had to bring in all the big dogs to talk about the monumental moment that is going on here in these swag streets so without further ado please give it up for you know him at the mass means the man with the plan zo What's going on with you? So, and listen, you know I had to bring in the Southern Knights. You know, it couldn't be a HBCU jank without the Southern Knights. Please give it up for Perry Wayne, my boy, BJ Jones. Oh, man, what is going on, fellas? What is going on? Happy New Year. Happy New Year. Happy New Year. Happy New Year, Happy New Year everybody, man. Happy New Year to you all as well, man. Happy New Year to you all. I, I appreciate y'all for attending this, this grand occasion <laughs> that has popped off on January. 
I mean, the first of the year can't get no better. So, listen, without further ado, you already know what it is. News broke today of Duke is expected to get this done, expected to hire FAMU coach Willie Simmons as his new running backs coach under Manny Diaz. Now, we know what he's done in these past years, never having a losing record at FAMU, winning the SWAC championship, uh, believe only losing two conference games while being in conference. Now, my question to you all is simply this. Would you have taken the job in your thoughts of Willie Simmons going to do? So you go first. Uh, I'll go first. Um, for me, and and I'm going to premise my, my answer with how I'm pretty much going to answer everything going forward because this whole thing is very subjective, right? And it's going to lead to an answer that I'm going to pr- uh, proceed to give later on. But for me and my trajectory, I would leave. Mm. Uh, and the reason why I would leave is because being a coach, and I've been a coach for a duration of time, um ultimately if i know what i plan to do for me and my family and my thing is it's my own personal goals not just the matriculation of my coaching career you know i would want to do it because i feel like i've done or i've reached the ceiling of what i can reach at famu because the moment i win a celebration bowl the only thing i can do is go back and do another one um and again i also feel that when it comes to what I make for the services that I've done, because Scott, you just put this, that that uh, that schedule back up there, right? Yeah, let me, let me nothing, get that for you. Not, nothing. I mean, his record. Nothing has changed for me from 2018 to 2023, with regards to my compensation. And guess what? COVID happened. Everything is going up except my pay. Um, <laughs> I'm just saying. And so I also feel that you know, for me. If need be, because I'm taking something, I'm looking out for the betterment of my family. And if need be, and I could come back to be a head coach again, because I said I have to be a head coach. I've been successful as a head coach. But again, it's a new challenge because I hate to quote a particular coach, either being elevated or terminated. Yep. And now, granted, elevated is, is, is a subjective as well. But when for me to make the answer, elevation for me is my pay. And I will leave. Perry, what you got? Yeah, I'm gone. <laughs> you call me, say, Perry, look, bro, you got a shot to come on up there. You know, we got an office for you. We're doing everything. You worry about six guys now. And for those six guys I give you about, what what they say that you possibly go? Half a meal. Half. Who is this again? Because <laughs> this sounds like somebody playing on my phone. So is this you, BJ? Who? Who the hell playing on the phone telling me they finna give me half a million dollars to worry about six guys? I'll see you in the morning. And I'm out of there. Hold on, Perry. Hold on. And to give it context, because we gotta be, we gotta give it context. How much are we currently making right now? 300. Okay. Oh, we, we, let's pay the pension in. Yeah, let's pay right, it. Okay, currently in this side is Willie Simmons and Fam You. And then Willie Simmons at FAMU, after doing six and five, nine and two, remember that 2019 season, they beat AT, but they was postseason oh, band. They couldn't go to the celebration bowl. So that's a possible celebration bowl appearance that they didn't get. 21 and 22, Jackson State, the only thing standing your way. And you come in here in 23, you win it all, you go undefeated, and you get the entire thing. Of course, now this is where the idea, and this is kind of, I ruffle some feathers. Saying this with Southern. And what I was saying was HBCUs, particularly in athletics, when you look at football coaches, you're not going to have a guy sitting around 20 years, 25 years these days, right? That that type of coach, that day and age just isn't there. Plus, fan bases get old with you quick. Even with even with success, that even they like, we need somebody else. We need some fresh blood. Don't have one just down mediocre average season. And they for sure calling for your head. In these day and age, you have to be able to, I think personally, HBCU athletics, particularly our football, are building blocks, stepping stones to help get guys to the next level. And the ability and the beauty of it is, even if they go up to the next level, aren't we going to always welcome them back? 
Aren't we going to always say, hey, man, we'd love to have you back. So why not take it as an opportunity? You make a half a million in two years. You made your family a million dollars. You're talking about the betterment of, of wealth within your family. You're talking about the experiences moving up and getting the opportunity. You know, in 10 years, we can see Willie Simmons as an offensive coordinator or a head coach maybe at the FBS. We don't know. But those are the type of networks and the type of connections that you then want to start building on the bigger level. A lot of people try to act like, no, we don't want to interact with them. We don't want one and one Man, you give me 500000 for six guys in the room, trust me, fellas, I'm taking it, and I get an opportunity to move up. Let me showcase what I can do because we harp about winning SWAT championships, don't we? And that, when we get a new coach, isn't that what we yelling about? We got to win this. We got to win that. All right, when I win it and I come back Monday and I get ready to build for the next year, what's really important? Is it just me yelling we want SWAT championships, or is it then me investing into the program to help elevate it to keep a coach when he can see the program continually building. And that's facilities, scholarships, NIL, whatever the case may be. It's on you, BJ. Let, let, before you go, BJ, before you go, I'm going to read something to y'all after BJ goes and you tell me how you feel about it uh, that somebody just sent to me. But go ahead, BJ, it's on you. I'll say this. There, there aren't many power five, now power four coaching opportunities. Those opportunities are limited and they are far and few between. And if you get an opportunity to, to get one of those positions, you have to take it. You looked at Willie Simmons. He has not won fewer than nine games since 2019. That's impressive. If you go looking at the stretches of Legendary coaches, some of them didn't even have stretches like that. Um, he won a celebration bowl at Florida AM. Guys, before Fam you before Willis Simmons got to Fam you the decade before that, they had like a 37% winning percentage. Ooh-wee. He has completely transformed the program. He's done what he's needs what he needs to do. And I know that ultimately Willie wants to be a head coach. And one thing about when you in that power five level with power five assistants working with power five people. Now you're in a different network. So now if you notice, Eddie Grant stays at the Power 5 level, from Auburn to Kentucky to, to what have you. Once you get up there, you're there. And those guys eventually matriculate into offensive coordinators and head coaches. Um, so I, I don't blame Willie Simmons. And if I'm him, I, I, you have to take that opportunity. Now, now, Scotty, before you go, I want to add some context to something that Perry stated, right, before you even go. Because Perry made the, the statement that, you know, uh, HBCUs are a stepping stone, right? And that, because uh, I already know that some people in the comments are going to say, well, why don't we build and create our own so it don't have to be a stepping stone? And guess what? That can be true as well. And we should thrive for that. However, that's only one half of the equation. The other half of that is we as HBCUs have to be proactive in making that happen. We can't be reactionary when it comes to taking care of our coaches or being a reactionary seeing down the line when it comes to or not having foresight to say, hey, man, this guy's won nine games three years in a row. Let's go ahead and give him a let's, – let's go ahead and uh, and, and see what we can do. Like like you scrambled up money this past 24, 48 hours. Yeah. We could have did that last year. We could have did that year before last. You know what I'm saying? When it comes to, you know, facility upgrades, we could be proactive and not secrecy – not being secretive about being proactive in that. A lot of us say that we want to be a mid-major or have the potential to be a group of five type of program. It's just talk. My thing is, like, for example, even with Willis Simmons, and I can even use Fred McNair, we wait until the threat of somebody coming to take what's ours without being proactive and taking care, taking care of it on the front end. So to add to, to Perry's point, yes, some people may perceive HB, HBCUs as stepping stones. But they don't have to be if you change it. Because guess what? We have the ability to change the narrative on it. If we can sit here and pay a coach uh, $400,000 at Tennessee State, there is no way on God's green earth Willis Simmons should make a dollar less than Eddie George. While at FAMU. Now, that that has been said. Because you're whoo, you, you preaching on this. Though, but let me read you to you from one of my sources that just said this to me. He said, Willie's agent went to the AD in October to discuss a possible raise. She told him that Willie had not done anything to deserve a raise. The agent went back to her after the SWAT championship 
and she said the same thing. She has known about this offer for two weeks and was trying to call his bluff. Willie is leaving because he no longer wants to work with her. That is what a source had just texted me and told me about the situation. I'm glad you just read that statement because I saw earlier this morning, I'm just going to pull the talk about the elephant in the room because race is in everything. Oh, Willie Siemens is leaving for the white man's money or the white man's program. Well, how can you say that when you just got the message right there? The black man had the ability to prevent all that. The HBCU had the ability to prevent all that. You can't have it both ways. We can't sit here because he's leaving. And what we perceive to be elevation, because I hate saying that, because to me, two things are true in this whole thing. The first thing that's true is, in my opinion, he's not elevating on the job. He's elevating his pay. That's a fact. He's elevating his pay. That's a fact. But he's also, to, in the coaching profession, to any AD or head coach on the FBS level, that wants to hire him or do anything with him going forward, they're going to look at this move as an as an upgrade or as an elevation on his resume. To the outside world or people like us or on the HBCU or FCS level, that could be subjective and that can be argued. But to any AD that's going to deal with him going forward, they're going to look at this as an upgrade on his resume. Like it or not, those are the two facts in all of this. So again, we cannot sit here and say he's making a move to do something for a white power structure or the white man's money or whatever, whatever nonsense they want to say when you have a black institution and a black entity doing what you just said in your comments, Scott. Floor is I, will also, I will also say this. If you make that argument, you're a simpleton. Now, th that's an argument that a simpleton would make. You may not be in a, simple to, a simpleton for making the argument, but that's simpleton type argument. Let, let me break something about every job outside of the power five is a stepping stone position. I don't care where you are. James Madison is a national power. They tra they just transitioned to FBS, went undefeated this year. Their coach left and went to Indiana. North Dakota State's head coach has national titles under his belt. He just left to become the linebackers coach at USC. Weber State was whooping ass about two or three years ago. Their head coach left to become a linebackers coach. Now he's a defensive coordinator in the Big Ten. Every position, every, I mean, I, literally, Mississippi State is a stepping stone position. Dan Mullen left there. Every time they have a coach that's successful, they leave to go somewhere. If There are very few, when I say like sought-after jobs in college football, everything outside of those is a stepping stone position. They didn't make it a bad position. That just I want I, sometimes I want us to understand athletics, and I think we have feelings and emotions because we're tied to this, and we just tied to black and white. But that's not reality. No, I, I like that, Perry. You got anything? <clears throat> yeah, I think <laughs> I love all the points, man, and they all make sense. And there's so many different perspectives to have. My first perspective is. Why play with the man in the first place talking about calling his bluff? Like, you know, if that's the why why even play that game, right? If there's a value and the value shows a worth and this can do something for the overall good, because think about how huge it is for a program like Florida AM and the institution to be able to have their market and brand all over the celebration bowl, all over the swag championship. National exposure, what this is doing for selling the program in the school, and you want to play with the very guy that's leading the way? You want to put him on the edge of his seat to really have to force him to be in this situation, to really have – he really thinking, should I leave or should I stay? Yeah. It should have never been that. You should have always let him know, as of now, bro, this is home. And consider anything around here, a casa es su casa, okay? <laughs> this is how we doing it around here. We we together. <laughs> we the amigos, all right? For some reason, you playing with them. Why? Yeah. Why? That's just all I want to know. Why when he showed his work? And unfortunately, I think we deal with that in our community a lot anyway. People want you to do a lot for a little. They know you got a business. That's the first deal they trying to work instead of. They won't go to nobody else to play that. They're not going to ask for the hook. But when it's your business, hey, man, can I, you know, let me get one of them shirts up off you, man. Let me let me get about 75% off my next. 
why do we do each other that way? And to the other point, I think the main thing is we have this such connectivity to HBCUs. And as we're talking about the stepping stone, the building blocks to elevate, to take yourself to the next level, we feel like you have to put a lifelong obligation. Once you come into the HBCU realm and you start coaching, we people tend to have this lifelong lock with you that you should never leave. Don't leave out the basement. Don't leave out this door. Don't get out the car. Stay with me forever. And then if you do decide to move on and take an opportunity, you almost kind of push the side like you just sold out for some reason. But at the end of the day, people have agendas for themselves and you have agendas for the institution. If I fulfill within my contract time the agenda I was supposed to do for the institution, that's to win games, right? Yep. That's to brain championships, right? Yep. I fulfill what that contract asks of me to do. Now, I'm not under lock and key. I can then go pursue and look at other contracts because the diction and the wording is different and all in terms of my responsibility. And my family, at the end of the day, I think you got it really has to matter. Yeah. What you can provide and create for generational wealth, because it ain't it, how many people you know making $500,000 a year, Jess, that you can just pick up the phone and be like, what's up, bro? For for a football game that you love, right? Like I mean, you, I mean, if somebody paid me five hundred k to talk, I'd be like, damn, I'm I'm winning. I'm winning. Mm -hmm. I think we all got a consensus that five hundred k. I catch you later. And you got half the responsibilities. You ain't got to meet with boosters no more. You ain't got to do all them, man. You got to do none of that stuff no more, man. No babies or nothing like that. Let me. Uh, I know. Oh. Scott, before you jump, I want to I want to answer Perry's question because he asked why, but he couldn't get to it. Right, that's the answer for that. The why is because black people devalue black things. That's the answer to why. I'm glad somebody so, said we, it. I want, I'm we, glad the floor is open. We we subconsciously devalue our own thing because again, when Scotty's comment was, "You haven't done anything." What the white kid said, bullshit. <laughs> he, <won nine. laughs> he got nine wins, three straight years. Now they were they were winning before he got there. <laughs> I mean, I mean th see that you see what I'm saying? Because I, I, I you know what since they wanna since they wanna play the other end and say, you know, oh, he's going to get the white man's money. Well, I'm I'm gonna I'm gonna give you a black rationale because had he at the white school, I hear coach win now. You've been losing before I got there. You go three, hold on, and you go three straight years of nine wins. <laughs> but, 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 but over here, you know what I'm saying, over here with with, 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 with my people. Nah, I, I'm going to wait till your contract expire. Then we might come up and do something. Or, oh, no, nah, we don't want you to go over there with maps and them. So let's go, we're going to take these 48 hours. Give us a chance to come up with some money because we, we don't want you to leave. We want you to stay here. <laughs> nah, it don't work like that, man. You be reactionary. Yeah. The thing is, and the point, forget what they say. Listen to what they do. What I'm saying is they shown you year after year after year. They truly didn't value you. Because if they did, they would the things that they're doing on the way out, because there's a threat of something, they would have done that last year, the year before last, the year before last. Period. And, 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 and let me say this before anybody come in the comments. All of my comments, I'm gonna be honest, it's not even directed at FAMU. It's HBCUs. Mm. Because FAMU is a micro what was going on in FAMU is a microcosm and all of them. JSU included. They all think it moved the same. We are all reactionary. And I don't care what the thing, the, the one thing about if any family alum is disagree with what I'm saying, the actions over the past year is telling you that you're lying. It don't matter what anybody says about we do this, we feel this. There's action to show that it's not matching up to what your mouth is saying. Uh, I learned a long time ago, you love for people to talk. Because your actions are going to confirm or deny what your mouth been saying. You know, one of the things to what you're saying as well is we're talking about coaches elevate and take themselves up. I take Southern, for example, looking for a head coach and named Terrence Graves. But beforehand, it came out in the article that one of the reasons Southern couldn't attract some of the coaches that people were saying, they didn't have the money to give them that type of salary. And we're talking low end 500 to 600,000 if you're trying to compete and drag a guy and say, hey, let's get the running backs coach or from Tennessee. Let's go get the wide receiver coach from Florida. 
it's a guy with a familiar name. It's a guy that just people have always said they wanted because he started out in a small market. And you watched his growth. You watched him blossom. And now he's on these staffs of these power five teams that we glorify anyway, as much as people say, don't go. Don't we glorify when we get one of their players at an HBCU? Come on. Mm -hmm. They come on down. You be like, oh, come on down. Price is right. Type oh, my God. We got this five star from Florida State. First thing we do is yell they name to give it some type of press freedom mm -hmm. to say so this what, is why. So what devalue out? Okay, I'm, I'm just. Mm -hmm. I'm, I'm, don't you hear me knocking? Okay, then let me. Eat. <laughs> <laughs> I'm just saying, but you realize when those guys do touch that level of money and get those type of positions. It really is hard when you see the success of them on that side to try to draw them back because they're making good money with less headache and worried about a small room compared to what you want them to do to come to your school and do a, a lot with a little. And the issue with that is we have to be like, go back to what Zoe said, we have to be proactive. We have to be ahead of things and see the value in it because that's why you have a strategic plan. You plan five, maybe two, three, ten years down the line to figure out what is this value? What am I even getting out of this coach if I'm spending this much money with him? Right? We'd be quick to say, oh, these coaches have to make this money. But when you look at a strategic plan, what is the value in return that you're getting out of this coach? And if you're getting that value that you're paying them and some, like winning a championship, winning Celebration Bowl, and putting yourself on a national audience, you then have to reassess and look at the value and say, okay, this value is climbing because we see the value in terms of applications going up. We see the value of the type of athlete that's deciding to come to school here. Look at all of them and look at the enrollment going through. The, guess what? You're paying the guy to be that face and to create that for your brand and for your advertisement or whoever the name is that you represent. You have to always assess what the value and don't look at it from yesterday. Already be five years ahead to realize what you're getting yourself into so you can be proactive in situations like this. Yeah. No, okay. Now, my question to you all, because we, we, we're going to move this conversation along, is where does fam you go from here? <laughs> I mean, let's let's call a spade a spade. It, that is the you cannot get this wrong because you're going. Listen, if if word is true from what, what I just received a text, that means you literally let your best asset walk out the front door. And he's telling you, I don't want to leave or at least show me that you care. Right. Like, I think me and Zoe talked earlier today about a boyfriend and girlfriend like, bro, like, show me that you care. And I'm telling you, I want to go to the movies and you never take me. And then I'm about to leave and say, hey, baby, the color purple's open. Let, let me I'll take you now. It's too late. It's too late. So you have the Quinn Grays. You have the Billy Rose. You have the KJ Blacks. And let me just tell you, I've received several text messages from players and they are they like scotty he needs to be either in-house or a florida guy they said scotty it is we different they that's all they said they said this team is different and and they they're really high on billy royal and kj black they're saying hey these are the two guys that 90 percent of the team won't be in the transfer portal if you hire either billy royal or kj black they said anybody else they're probably going to start from scratch. Just giving you the heads up. So where does fam you go from here? So you look, you look ready. You look ready. So you look ready. Yeah, you already know what I'm going to say. So uh, I, I have my own thing of where to go with this. I know y'all going to go crazy, but until, you know, you even mentioned the whole idea of Quinn Gray, which I think that's just safe and logical because he is an alum. Uh, he has a year, you know, a, a year of head coaching experience and he's a beloved son at fam you. But I want to take everybody down a different path uh, when it comes to Knicks head coach. And I'm not saying that this is a sure thing for great success. I'm just saying for the pathway that FAMU was about to go down with regards to the possibility of being on probation due to APR sanction, you got to look at what you can do with regards to pay as well as filling a need because it's going to be hard to attract a coach knowing that you're going to be on probation. Mm. All right. So with that being said, I think one coach that – that uh, would I think could work temporarily during the probation status, I would say Ed Reed. Now, I'm not saying that under the premise that he's going to come in and be a home run fire. The reason why I say Ed Reed is because he is tied to Florida. 
he uh, he's shown the propensity to uh, – he's obviously in the market because he's going everywhere. I know some people are going to say he's thirsty, looking for a head coaching job. But the thing is, it feels, it feels a need for FAMU in the sense that he's the coach that's willing to take the job no matter how it comes. So probation won't be an issue for him. It's going to be a hard to attract a, 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 a good coach knowing that you're going to be on probation. Also, the thought of losing guys in the portal, Ed Reed could be an attractive for that. And so I also think that he would use the FAMU job as a means to say, as long as I'm successful, minus even having the uh, – the w- without having the chance for postseason play, I'll be willing to take it because Lord knows he's not trying to be there for 10 years. No way. If he can do this job to even do what, what Willie Simmons did, the difference is a, a coach like Ed Reed doesn't have to have the same type of success that Willie Simmons has to get to the next level. If you take um, uh, fam, you taking a step back. Ed Reed can go seven to four, eight and three because he's Ed Reed and he's a Hall of Famer. He can get, he can actually segue that to something else. And I, honestly, if if with, under APR sanctions, if you look at the name of any coaches to leave the job better than you found it. Now, coincidentally, Willie Simmons did that, but some people may disagree once APR hits right. But then Ed Reed, all he has to all he has to do is weather the storm. As long as the roster is intact and they've been winning, he can actually take that and segue on to somewhere else. Let me hold on before y'all go. I I want to I want to stay on I want to stay on Zoe's point and tell me this: if you had Ed Reed with Coach Rez and still is your recruiting coordinator, that is and the MOP stands for most outstanding person. Like like that that, that to me he. He next to Willie Simmons to me is the most important person on that staff. So you tell me you have Ed Reed with Coach Rez still being your recruiting coordinator. You you cooking with some grease, but going back to go, let's go back to the situation with the coaching and who you guys think would be in the better situation. BJ, it's on you. Um, or whoever you might think, because I'm I'm I don't mind Vincent Dancy. I think Vincent Nancy would be a great hire. That's just me personally. But go ahead, B. I definitely holler at KJ. Um, kind of keep the ties on KJ. Kind of, you know, see if he's interested. Um, there's a head coach that's about uh, 70 minutes or so away from Tallahassee named Tremaine Jackson at Valdosta State. Uh, originally uh, played at Texas Southern. Head coach at that also state, one that Colorado mind. Um, I would go him because I would go and see what he says because you could get him for cheap. Uh, when you start talking about uh, NCAA potential NCAA probation, um, that that's something that's going to hinder you a little bit. So finances might you know come into question. That's a guy that you that you can get for because he's not making much of that off the state. Um, I thought about Ron Smith, current DC. Um, he's a guy worked up under Nick Saban. Uh, he's worked under the, uh, the University of Florida. Uh, he's done it at the Power Five level. Um, you see what he's done to that uh, that defense, that dark cloud defense. That they're dark cloud now, uh, and, and he's a younger guy. He's already on staff, knows the kids' relationship. Uh, there's, there's just a few options, you know, a few places that I would go. Hey, BJ, let me ask you this before I go to Perry. Do you think Sam, you hire as a white guy? Sam, you better learn to, to hire the best guy. Uh, but, 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 but let me just say this. Let, let, let's be realistic, okay? The fam you board of trustees have made more mistakes than things they've gotten right. All right? We can we can talk about FAMU more than likely bombs coaching hires. This is the the group that hired Alex Wood. This is the group that that hired Earl Holmes. This is the group that hired that that those long list of coaches that they had um, after Joe Taylor. Th- the same people, yeah. So you don't want them to get involved with this. Now this can go real wrong. If they get involved, and we can talk about HBCUs and, and their boards, <clears throat> Texas Southern, Southern, um, and, and coaching hires. All right. Um, so, look, we've seen the history on this. 
And usually they get this long. Wait, Perry, what you got? I was just feeding into what y'all was talking about at first with the whole Ed Reed, because that was the first name I was going to say. Why don't I see Ed Reed? Then Zoe jumped into it, and the first thing popped in my mind is Ed Reed went to FAMU and whooped Bethune Cookman ass in the Florida Classic. What would that look like? What would that look like? That's just my imagination. I was just, that's not really what I want, what I'm thinking, but that was my imagination because I started listening to you guys, and I'm like, man, that sounds pretty cool. I think at the end of the day, whichever guy that they hire, you got to already look at what the cap is going to be on the salary. They just didn't have enough to pay this guy, and he jumped ship. So where you think you're going to put yourself in a position of the next guy that you're going to get, right? So you got to find somebody within that space, within that salary cap that, that's going to be willing to come in and either keep the staff or build the staff. Now, I'm not always a fan of saying what the players want in terms of the next head coach. I want somebody when we go through their pedigree to realize regardless of who's on the team, whether it's this team or you be, rebuild a team, that the pedigree is going to be what we're looking for here, right? Because once again, I'm looking at that strategic plan. What do I want this program to be in three to five years? What are we looking at and what are we willing to spend and invest in return in order to see what at the end of the day? Wins. Wins. And you want a value back. You want your value to, to continue to increase. Now, when you look at these guys, we're already talking about the cap of the money. Now, KJ, I'm not counting your pockets, but I'm pretty sure you're making more than Willie Simmons fooling with the Rams. <laughs> what y'all think? Uh, I think he's close. I, th I think he's about probably, because I think he's an analyst. So I, he's probably in that 200, 300K. He's probably in that same range. Yeah. Talk That's to me really about good. my guy Billy right here. What's going on with Billy? I think he was on the staff uh, not too long ago. One of the players texted me and said he got cut because of uh, budget cuts, so they had to let him go. But they said he's like a he's like a legend in Tally. Like for real, they said like he's he's that guy. And I understand. Great, wonderful quarterback at Florida and them. Once again, we do the HBCU thing anyway. We go back to the names that's familiar. It always come back to it. I wouldn't be surprised if he does move on and Willie Simmons goes on and Gray is named the head coach. It just sound right. It just sound perfect. All of us have faltered from it. Southern has done it. Jackson State did it. And we've <laughs> all done it. Right? All corn. Fred McNair, right? We we love those names that sound so ah, I just remember oh, really? that time of greatness mm -hmm. when that person was here. It's comfort. And sometimes we get into this case of can we let that go? Or are you scared to go try something new? I'll tell you this though, I would. And listen, I have a relationship with uh, Coach KJ and Coach Quinn. Um, I talked to Coach Quinn. Coach Quinn said that's his dream job. He said that's one of those jobs that you, he said he doesn't mind staying there 5, 10, 15 years because that's his dream job. He's, you know, Tallahassee through and through. But I'll tell you this. If either one of them jokers come in making more than Willie Simmons, is flat out disrespectful. It's flat out disrespectful. Now, I get that you might have to bump up Coach KJ's – because he is coming from the Rams, so I get that you got to make it enticing. I, that I might, I might, I might let that slide. But Coach Quinn, you know I'm a fan. Don't I am not paying Coach Quinn Gray more than I was willing would would have been willing to pay Willie Simmons, and he's walking into a job that Willie Simmons has built. That doesn't make any sense to me. I'm sorry, that's just me personally. So okay. I want to I want to I want to caution you on saying. Uh, dream job. Let me let me tell you why. Um, what is one dream for one entity? It could be turned into a nightmare by another. Ooh. Because I, as I recall, Willis Simmons said this was his dream job. Don't look so much like a dream. That is. That's fair. That is fair. I wanna, and also, I want to ask all you guys. I want to ask y'all. How do you feel about the prospects or or or? How would you think if Fred Bernier was offered the job and took it? That would be asinine. Asinine. I don't, I don't think Fred Bernier works in Florida. Okay. I don't. I don't think that Fred Bernier works where he is because of where he is. Okay. Like it worked. I think it works at Alcorn. Florida cats are different. Um, they they different, man. They yeah. I don't think Fred works at Florida and them. I hey, call me crazy. 
I like this. I like that Bama down in Fort, Fort Valley State. Sean Gibbs. Yeah, Sean Gibbs. Oh, yeah, bro. Hey, that Bama be co- – listen, I am a fan of Sean Gibbs. I'm telling you right now, I would not – that is a good hire in my personal opinion. I think that's a damn good hire. So I'm, I'm, I'll am I'm be on that bandwagon. I ain't even going to hold you. But, let you me, know – Let me get in on this right quick because, first of all, it's the – I guess I'm looking at the salary, and I think this is one of the, the, the things that has really driven college football crazy as well. Because I think about the situation with Eric Dooley at Southern, but then for most people, you saw how much Jumbo Fisher was getting paid to leave out the door at Texas A&M. Mm-hmm. We give these guys this huge amount of money, and I understand on their level why they're doing it, because they're doing what I'm talking about, that strategic plan in terms of bringing in a guy, what his value is, and what we're looking to gain out of him during the term of his contract. So by the time he done, whatever we paying him, we should have made that back and some. Right? As we plan, we looking at this value. And if this is a value, he better bring something that's going to cover him and look for the future. I hope whoever it is, whenever they get to FAMU, that FAMU does not then put them on the pedestal that Willie Simmons is and that you value them and give them the money that Willie Simmons worked so hard that ultimately he couldn't even stay because of that. Max. Somebody's going to have to come in and prove they work. Yes, he may have left them in a good situation. Yes, they won a championship last year. But if you let the guy come in that's going to be the head coach and never has been a head coach, to me, he's going to have to prove something. That's what I look at those short-term deals. Because let me see what I can work with you in two to three years instead of trying to marry you, right? Let me court you for a little while. If I can see the trajectory of the program headed in the right direction, then we can look at what they should have did with Willie Simmons. What ways can we then increase what we're paying you because of the value and we already being proactive? And it continues to go back to what Zoe said, being able to stay ahead of these things before you find yourself behind it. It should have took Duke. You should have known eventually with the success of your coach that somebody's going to come knocking. Yeah. You got to have that on your mind when a coach is at this level because thank you for saying it, BJ. It's okay with us being building blocks and stepping stones. Everybody not trying to be in this class forever. Some people want to move up. Coaching, we get selfish by having a coach because we love them when they win. And we'll remember them forever if it's a good time. But we got to realize at the same time, these people have their agendas. These people have their families. These people want to do their thing in order to get out there and try new opportunities, try new things. And if you're not going to be proactive to try to keep them and show them that you love them, that you want them, and value them in that moment instead of – you don't want nobody to wait to the last minute to give you confirmation. You're supposed to feel – if I'm creating this, I'm supposed to feel the love okay. and feel like this is home. Mm-hmm. No matter if I'm selling it to a player or anybody, I'm like, man, this is home. And to me, a good AD – is being proactive after the winning the swag championship, we're trying to get a contract done, or mm-hmm. I'm, or I'm at least leaking to the media. Hey, we have offered Willie Simmons a new contract. He has decided he he hasn't signed it, right? So that 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 takes the leverage off of me and then puts it back on Willie Simmons. But from what I've been told, if, if people coming in who haven't heard this, this is what I received from one of my sources. One of my sources said this about the AD. Willie's agent went to the AD in October to discuss a possible raise. She told him that Willie had not done anything to deserve a raise. (laughs) The agent went back to her after the SWAC championship, and she said the same thing again. She has known about this offer for two weeks and was trying to call his bluff. Willie is leaving because he no longer wants to work with her. Now, let me tell you this, and I'm going to add this to it. How Willie, true do you think this is? How true is that? Hey. I be- Listen, from this source, I believe it's 85 to 90% facts. I really the do. The show was dancing and swimming in the confetti and popping the shit in that locker room and on the field talking about how they won the Celebration Bowl. And this is my – I want to add this to it. Willie was already – he was already on the outs when fam, you got rid of Courtney. Right when they got mm. rid of Doshe, he was already like, "Hey, y'all got one more time to mess with my guys." Like you, you see what I'm saying? So he was already in a in a in an adversarial role with FAMU. Then you hire Tiffany, who wasn't even the top five consideration for the job. She the, the committee didn't pick her. 
you give her the job and then this is how she's treating you when you're you're new ma'am you're new P plus don't forget the whole academic thing before the first the game all the compliance issues that he had from players from from FAMU not doing their job, FAMU compliance directors and them not wanting to do their job. So Willie, and you're talking and and, and Perry and BJ and y'all all said it about the no headaches. That's that you couldn't get no bigger headache. That was a national story about compliance, something you couldn't even do. You couldn't and, even. And Scotty, it. that's one of the issues when we talk about the headache. We can use it in that time, but then when you really break down what the headache is, a lot of people like, dog, at that point, you starting to peel back the layers and you starting to unveil some things. And that's when people draw, hey, you're talking about HBCUs. You're you talking about stuff we need to talk about behind closed doors because you don't want your business out there in the streets. And unfortunately, it's going to get out there because we see how you operate and how you handling business. Let me. Now, I'm not going to call her the villain because she's not a villain. This is just a business. You, you and know I understand what with business, I don't take it personal. Business is business. You and know at the end of the day, I understand how this works because that's simply what it is. You, but how do you go about handling business? It should be what circle here. And that's where we often run into our issues, not just fam you, but across the board when we start to talk about HBCUs and having people in positions. It's how we're going about doing our business and the lack of knowing sometimes how to correctively handle business. To even further echo what you just stated, Prairie, it kind of brings that old saying, how you do anything is how you do everything. And that pretty much, summer, and again, this is not an attack on FAMU. FAMU is just a microcosm or just a microcosm of HBCUs as a whole. And that's pretty much, to, to add to what you're saying, Perry, that's pretty much what it is. The way we do anything is how we do everything. And we, for the most part, have been quiet and wrong and loud and wrong. And to also echo your point, we have to start being about the business of taking care of business. And we cannot be reactionary. And when it comes to things that we do, whether that's academically or athletically, we have to change the mindset in our business practice. And it just so happens that what's the front porch of, of every university? Athletics. 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 Why we have to be about the business of changing it. I, I, I'll, I'll say all this. Twelve ads up there, Scotty. Not just I'll, put all twelve I, of them. Line them all up. <laughs> I, I would <laughs> say this. I, business. But I, I, I would say this, and we, we, we talk. How much has systematic racism impacted the way we do business? Let me give you a point. Fifteen, ten years ago. If you became a head coach in the SWAT or any HBCU conference, that was it. You weren't going nowhere. That's true. For years, we made the argument, hey, man, we got good coaches here. Why didn't they get opportunities to go some of these other places? When Ron Cooper left, left Alabama A&M to go to South Carolina, that was a big deal. Yeah. That was the first time something like that had happened. So from a, from a race racial standpoint, our ADs of yesteryear didn't have to worry about this stuff happening because it didn't happen. Now the world is progressing. These coaching circles that are starting to get small. And our guys, um, a lot of the guys that we're getting, they're coming from that, that you know, those PWIs. Willie Simmons played at Clemson, played his last year at, uh, at the Citadel. Coached at Middle Tennessee State, played, you know, some of those PWIs. He was already in those circles. So the business has evolved. We have to evolve in the way in which we handle the business as well. Absolutely. Now, the, the, the graphic that I have up is this. You no pressure is is. Listen, you talking about a high stakes job right now. You have just lost probably the most impactful outside of Dion, one of the most impactful coaches in the SWAC right now. Right. Who was a guarantee walking nine wins? Who was a guarantee walking into probably to a SWAC, a SWAC East, a SWAC championship? Blue blood program. Blue blood yep. program. You, so now you're. This is probably going, this is the hottest job in FCS right now, outside of all the big, you know, the big boys up in the Montana area and stuff like that. To me, you cannot get this wrong. I'm gonna say it again. Yes, it's a crapshoot. But you can't get it wrong. If especially if you're the reason that, that the coach is on this out, if you're the reason, you you right. can't. 
they gonna get it wrong. Oh yeah. <laughs> Let's be real. Yeah. I mean, Willie well, Simmons leave. The data gonna, shows they gonna get it wrong. That's, the data that's, shows you. That's a hard guy to back. Willie Simmons back. is the best coach that FAMU has had since Billy Joe. They the gonna get it wrong. I can assure you. So quick update, uh, I got sent this on Twitter. Uh, they're going to have a Zoom meeting at 345 to discuss the the uh, the situation with FAMU and the coaches. So just good. Give they're everybody. watching us right now. <laughs> In fact, all 940 of y'all, man, pray, 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 make sure y'all uh, like the stream. Make sure yeah, you do that right now. You can hit the thumbs up, and you can catch all these brothers on their own platform. Zo, real quick, before we go uh, in the middle of the show, uh, let everybody know where you can find yourselves at. Zo, go ahead. I uh, mean, Zoe Phillips 1400. You can find me on uh, KC 1400 Media on Monday, Wednesday, Fridays. You can also catch me with Tiger Talk uh, with the 1400 Club. Uh, we're dropping videos of uh, all the new recruits coming in. Get prepared for signing day. Hey, first of all, hold on, hold on. Let me, let me, let me caveat that. <laughs> let me caveat that. <laughs> They're going to give you a lot of fluff with them recruiting. <laughs> Be very mindful. They might they might grade them on a curve, a blue eyes curve. So just be very mindful about that. I'm not saying they're not. I'm not. Hurt you so far. <laughs> hey, BJ, where can they find you at? Man, you can find me HBCU Nightly, man. You can follow us at HBCUnightly.com. If you have not subscribed, man, go to the website. Um, HBCUnightly.com subscribe to let you know anytime we go live uh, release anything new um, that's you can find me with my partners Joshua Sims and Erica uh, Rochelle so how you boy Scotty on there coming up a few times this upcoming year man go mix it up a little bit absolutely Perry where can they find you at man the Jaguar Journal I do every Saturday you can watch it YouTube subscribe to the channel as well as follow the the Facebook page, and then on my own page, uh, On The Yard Sports. You can follow it on all social media platforms, Facebook, Twitter, Instagram, as well as subscribe to the YouTube channel. So that's On The Yard Sports. That's my thing. And I also do the radio with the Jaguar Journal. Now, this should be fun. Right what you say? What you say, Zoe? The swag Steve Harvey right there. Invite <laughs> <laughs> me over to host one of y'all uh, press conferences. <laughs> <laughs> Wait, oh boy! Let me host the Jackson State press. <laughs> hey, this is the question of the year, right? Because I, I, you know, none of y'all are fam. You guys, who becomes the Swack East front runner now that Willie is essentially gone? And depending on who they hire, that team is gone, right? And then we can also take it. Who's the swag front runner? Cause we all knew if Willie stays, it's fam. You until it ain't fam. You. So in your uh, opinion, uh, yeah, I yeah, so yeah. thinking. Yeah. So I know what you thinking. <laughs> well, Perry, I'm going to start with you though. I'm going to start with you. Okay. I'm going to leave Zoe last. Well, I, I, Zoe is on his hat. I see what he thinks. <laughs> <laughs> That's who he thinks the front runner is. I already know. I mean, what is what? He got to think. He said water's wet. Huh? <laughs> he said water's wet. Then you get a chance. It, wait, is fam you coming to Jackson this year? Yeah. 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 Oh, that's the and I had and that was a dub. Okay, that was a guaranteed stamp dub. Now, no, man, that's 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 changed. But that. at the same time, I think you got to factor in Alabama State just off the defense alone. They don't take much offense for them, but you hope they can build something. But I, I would think with Bama State being right there, going on the road to lose to beat at Jackson State at homecoming, it wasn't that bad of an ass whooping at, at Tallahassee. But nonetheless, you fell on the backside of it. You got victory over Bethune Cookman. You got a victory over Andem. You got a victory over Valley. I mean, you kind of got yourself in position if you look at what their body of work last year was against the Swack East. You got to think that maybe they can build off of that, and you take Fam, you Willie Simmons, and everything that was already in the equation. I think it's got to be between the rock, paper, scissors of Jackson State and Alabama and I mean, Alabama State. I'm not sold on Connell Maynard. Like, I, I, I felt at this point in his career in the Swackies, if Whitley Simmons was out the way, the first name we should be saying is Alabama it's, and him. Absolutely. Oh, absolutely. my God. The Bulldogs are finally, they are what Jackson State was to fam you. And now, fam, you finally gets out the way. You would think it opened up the door now to the Bulldogs, but it has not. You since saw the people down in Montgomery at Alabama State take a leg up. And I think between Alabama State and Jackson State, those are two programs that I think will be 
the, the front runner, and that is a classic game considering the history now that you've seen of recent that people have actually got to see of this long time standing series between two teams. Now it really adds a lot more when you put TC against Eddie Robinson. And guess what? They both alums of their teams, both former players, and they both have this grudge. Oh, you played me for homecoming to whoop me? Oh, now you played me for homecoming to whoop me? So I think it's turning into something. Jackson State and Alabama State could possibly be the future for the Swackies for the next couple of years. That's good. I like that. BJ, what you got? Uh, depending on what FAMU does, it could still be FAMU. Uh, but let's just say worst case scenario, it's between it's between, uh, between uh, Jackson State and Alabama State. Um, I, I think both of those teams are, are right there to uh, capture the crown. Um, just in case, this is the crazy part about the Alabama State Jackson State rivalry. Alabama State, for whatever reason, doesn't beat Jackson and Montgomery. But then on the opposite side, Jackson doesn't beat Alabama State in Jackson. It's a damnedest thing when that, of that rivalry when you look at it for over like the last decade or so. Um, so that's going to be very interesting. Uh, but if you had to ask me right now, I think it's I think it's a three horse race: FAMU, Jackson State, Alabama State. Mm, mm, mm. So they've been waiting. BJ just stole my thunder. I was going to make the point that I mean we have a winning record in that new stadium. Uh, we've only lost one time there. Um, Whoa! Yeah, one game. Whoa. Whoa. So y'all call that Jackson East? I mean, and they call it Montgomery West. What are we talking about? <laughs> <laughs> yeah, well, we, I mean, we, we still on a winning streak. We still hold the series lead at, at home against them as well. It just happened to have success here now. Uh, over yeah, the- recently. Yeah, but when it when it comes to uh, us and them. I mean, they they they've lost quite a bit than, than what we they think, and they just lost a quarterback to the portal. Uh, they got to bring another quarterback, uh, losing quite a few pieces on defense. We have the most returning starters on both sides of the ball within the division. I mean, so that right there alone give me credence to think that we'll probably take it. But I mean, they weren't as good. of now, I mean, I mean, they weren't really all that good. I mean, you didn't have a lot of offense. <laughs> well, you got like all conference players coming back. You know what I'm saying? Like having Doug Brady. We can say they were we can say they were good, but I can also return and say it's the first year of a whole new regime. That's fair, but you I mean you just beat the best of the average. But anyway, you know, I mean, did you beat anybody with a winning record? I will this year. <laughs> okay. Now, now, let me ask you this. Do you see if Willie Simmons does move on, regardless who becomes the head coach, fam, you just basically keeping going. Is this no. this this is a program like, is this the new North Dakota state of the swag? Like, no matter who's the coach, the system is in place. The program continues to move forward no matter who it is. Negative. It, it, there's no, in my personal, it's no possible way because nobody's Willie Simmons. When you're, when you're the play caller that you are, that isn't, that's a secret weapon that goes into you with every football game. Like there's plays. If you just watch Willie Simmons and how he coordinates, there's plays. Musa could have been a blindfold and just threw it to a spot and the band was wide open. There's not a lot of offensive play callers that do it that well. Right. And, and I don't, and to me, I'm not saying talent wise, they can't be competitive, but I'll tell you this, you lose the Southern game. You lose the, you lose the, the celebration bowl. You lose the Jackson's. You you lose the Bama State game. Why? Because Willie calls those games. Think about it. That last drive. That's all Willie. That and last drive against Southern, Southern game too, Scotty. The last yeah. game. That last drive against uh uh Southern. That's Willie. The the drives against Texas Southern. That's Willie. The the celebration bowl. That's Willie. Think about all the touchdowns that came open. The Bama's was scot free. Just, I mean, just him and Jesus. The, you gotta take those into contra- you got you. Does another play caller walk into fam you like that? Do I? I don't believe that happens. Listen, it's listen. You're in the state of Florida. You can spin around three times, throw a rock up, and hit a kid with dreads that runs four three. That's not the issue, right? The issue is, can I put you in the place that you're supposed to be and make the plays I need you to make, and then have the quarterback to make them? And I'm gonna say it. Every time when Jackson State was Jackson State at the highest point, the hardest thing was, could you block it? Can you see it? And can you make the throw? And when in those attributes go back to FAMU now, can you see it? Can you block it? And can you dial it up to make the throw? And I don't see that happening. So I think there is a I think there's a downtown. And I'll say this and I'm going to give I'm going to give uh, Zoe's credit. 
I don't think a first year coach at FAMU walks away seven and four. I'll, if if they, if they, I don't care if it's Quinn Gray, KJ Black might, KJ Black might, but Quinn Gray, I don't see it going seven and four. Billy Roll, I don't see it going seven and four. I really don't. That's and just you my know what I what I don't or what I would hate to see happen here is what we saw with like North Carolina A and T, right? Where you know I that bad. I don't think it's that bad. I don't say it's gonna be that bad, but it's just like you you go from the top and then boom. Like, how long will it take you if you do drop to get back there? Can somebody get I mean it took yeah, it took them 20 days. years the last time. Huh? It's gonna be bad. It took them 20 years. This 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 right here time. It took them 20 years right here. You know, the bad. same thing with you know, with something getting to that point. Same thing with some of these programs, it's like you have that high, and it's hard to keep that high going with the next guy. And it really is. And so, you know, fam, you fans, I just think if Willie Simmons does decide to leave and see, we saying whether he leave or he stay. If he stay, you better, what they say, count your lucky stars. Count your lucky stars. Hey, just say thank you. And at that point, continuously put everything you can into the program moving forward. I'm talking about the effort, the ticket sales, uh, whatever donate. Y'all need to be starting the Willie Simmons donation drive every Friday. He said, I mean, Dave said at least our ring got four of them. Why did listen, bro? Mm -hmm. And y'all can't even get out the cellar of the CAA, but y'all but y'all got four of them things. Well, oh, this A&T, this Aggies. Yeah, this Aggie, man. Stop it. Oh, yeah, they they, they gonna be like Southern was when we can't let the 90s go. Watch <laughs> how many years it's gonna go by when they still they will not be able to let that era go. And I understand hey. you do know that. So, the 80s. Oh, do y'all still hang on to the 80s? As much as Southern hang on to the 90s. Mm -mm. You do know today is the first day of 2024, right? So they ask another year to how long it's been for them. <laughs> <laughs> hey, can we oh. all hold on to anything? <laughs> Woo. Have y'all let the 80s go? Or do WC Gordon and them 80s still like you got to find that? No. No. But Dion made y'all forget all that. I hang on to puberty yet when they have no. My point, and it's like these errors with sometimes you when you have them and they're good, you got to remember the next guy may not be that direct reflection of that era. And Man, we got to be okay with that sometimes. They're at home playing Gladys Knight right now. Can it be all oh, that it was so simple then? <laughs> no, it's over. <laughs> over huh? Move on. Is this oh. <laughs> 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 oh, 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 I was saving oh. it for fam you, but that was just a perfect time. Thank you, so I appreciate it. <laughs> oh, <laughs> oh. <laughs> Whew. Ooh, man, listen, they no, them bellas are in denial. I don't get it. I do not. We're gonna be fine. They <laughs> stop saying that. You said at the beginning of the year, and y'all were one in ten. Hey man, this is, hey, this is not, keep hope alive. Yeah, y'all gonna be fine eventually. <laughs> eventually, we just don't know how long that's gonna be. Keep hope alive. And so you can help the fam you fans because you can counsel them, knowing that you guys kind of went through a similar yeah. thing and trying to keep hopes of you know keep everything afloat. Don't let everybody jump ship. Hey, mm -hmm. we still got good recruits coming in. Y'all talk about it. Hey guys, we got good coaches coming in. Guys, hey. We're going to keep this. What you said at the beginning of the season when you was telling you had that hat cocked to the side and you was standing there telling them to get their ticket, you was trying to keep people in the game to say, hey, we going to be fine. You can help counsel the fam, you fans, through this difficult time of transition. Yeah, Dave got to count, counsel his own ass through it because he's still <laughs> in it. Uh, his promise is triggers. I'm sorry. You triggered that a parent. That was last year. You and fam, you were the same boat. <laughs> you said us? Yeah, you and fam, you're in the same boat. We oh, wasn't dedicated yeah. clearly to our code. We gave them money to leave. We wasn't trying to raise money. <laughs> <laughs> Dooley got a check this morning. He got a deposit hit his account this morning. Just just to be gone. <laughs> January 1st this morning, six figures hit his account this morning. So today, Dooley Day. <laughs> Dooley Day. Dooley Day. Yeah, Dooley Day. Hit the, hit the Gucci show. It, it, hey, it, oh, I don't got my Gucci gang. <laughs> yeah, that account hit today. He didn't have to worry about all that. With 
what's going on. That that account hit today. He got yeah, my boy. My boy Dula said, "Just call him Rich Homie Kwanzaa." Hey, that's <laughs> it. Oh man, but, but, but no, man. But but in all in all seriousness, though, uh, again, nothing I said was to fam you. It was it's HBCUs as a whole. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Got to be better. We got to move different. Because again, I want to commend them to being able to, as as a, as as a fan base, as a school, as an alumni base, to sit there and say, "Hey, we want to fight to have our coach, and we're going to get this money in 24 to 48 hours." I want to commend them for doing that. The only problem with that, though, was that that should have been done last year. You know what I'm saying? Or 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 or, or any type of thing. Show that earlier. You know what I'm saying? And and Steve made it coming earlier. It was like you know, so things happened that wasn't this season. That was last season. All of it adds up when you talk about mm -hmm. somewhere or you're gonna leave. It all it all comes into play. But as HBCU fans and alums, we gotta move different. Our businesses practice, our business practices have to be different. You take care of the things you love, you don't react when something's on the way out the door. It ain't gonna change, bro. I love my HBCU and I love HBCUs, but it ain't gonna change. I mean, you would literally have to clean house from top to bottom and get the whole new mindset, Fact. new way of thinking. Uh, I think as long as you continue to have the position of power that people hold, it creates a certain mindset. And then you're going to have a large group out there that's going to be so knit tough about protecting HBCUs that they're not willing to actually look in the mirror. they just willing to keep painting it up and telling you it's, it's good because we're going to support each other. Well, our HBCUs, you talk about Wakanda, that's what these HBCUs, because if you're going to have the most educated people that know how to research, you know how to, obviously, they say to invest money and to build brands, that's what our institution should be. And like I said, nothing's never personal. It's strictly business. And it has to, we have to learn how to do business. Like, there's nothing wrong if we know we're working on a TV deal instead of just a room for us that may not understand what the hell this TV deal is to go out to the outside world or to do find people to come in to help us to get a better understanding. What happens is if you get, that's like right now, how many of us on here know how to cook a pie? Any kind of pie. You know how to cook a pie, Zoe? Mm -hmm. What kind of pie? Apple pie, blackberry pie. All right, well, you won. BJ, you know how to cook a pie? Yep. All script? Not, not, don't look at me. I don't know how to cook a pie. So we at least got two people that know how, and I'm not sure how good y'all know how to cook a pie. <laughs> but y'all may say y'all know how to cook a pie, right? And then you got two people blatantly say, we don't know how to cook a pie, cook a pie all right? Bake a pie, excuse me. So if you get us in the room, don't you think eventually we may need to, because if I'm sitting here listening to Zoe, Zoe, like, hell yeah, you got to do this, you got to do that. Well, we all at that point, instead of just Zoe knowing how to fix and bake this pie, when we in this room, we all should be learning from Zoe. So when I leave this room, Scotty, you should know how to bake a pie. Yep, yep. Terry should know mm -hmm. how to bake a pie. BJ and all of us learn from that. That's how we strengthen. But that's but that's how I felt. I felt about FAMU and Valley with the way that they stream their games, right? Like they have the mm -hmm. best streaming in the in the swag. Why aren't they instrumenting that down to other schools? And that's a whole nother that's a whole nother show and conversation. Let but me that's what this is when you start to peel the layers back. I, I get I, 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 I gotta quote you on something that you said. It is it's, it's tantamount that I have to say this, and I'll quote you. HBCUs are great academically, right? And some of these institutions have outstanding business programs, but yet and still, we do bad business. I'm gonna say it again. These are great institutions academically with great business schools, but as a conference and as individual institutions from an athletic standpoint, we do bad business. Take it even a step further, uh, Zoe. Most alums talk about how well their alums are doing. So mm -hmm. why, to me, it would be like, hey, Tony, you've ran a successful business. How can we do such and such to make more money on this aspect? Or, hey, we got a, we, the fam, you got somebody who's like the president at ABC. Why don't you consult her, your fam, you alum, to say, hey, because, you know, the HBCU network, it, it only takes you about five people, maybe four people to get to who you need to get to. Right. Like it's like, hey, this person or this person, they either get they graduated frat brother to whatever. So you can get to who you need to get to and say, hey, we're looking about doing this. What would you recommend? 
Because tell me what alum would not want to be a part of the process to help their school get better. That's the whole reason that they want to be alums. You know why we don't, Scotty? Ego. My dad says it all the time, man. Negroes plus egos equals zero. Ooh. A lot of times from an ego standpoint, we won't go out and say what we don't know and what we need help with because of our egos. And that that idea and mindset um, has hurt us. And also, man, we talked about a few while, a little while ago, we talked about the boards, these boards of trustees, boards of supervisors, or what have you. Uh, if, if you look at Texas Southern, you look at Southern, you can look at any of these places. We can look at these boards to see where they've made horrible decisions. But when you look deeper, oftentimes with these boards, they make decisions based on what's going to benefit that small group of people inside of that room, whether it may be politically or from a business standpoint. Mm. The school, the student athletes, and everybody else be damned. And that's how you get to some of these bad uh, decisions that we've made, like FAMU hiring Alex Wood. Like, when you go back and look at why that hire was made, who Alex Wood was, what was his resume prior to then, you look at his resume and stuff, you're like, man, there's no way in hell you make that hire. But then you start talking to FAMU people, and you start talking about the politics and, and what happened and why did he got that job, then it started to make sense. Same thing that Texas Southern is going through. Same thing that we went through, that we're going through at Southern right now. Yeah. It's crazy. It's absolutely crazy. Let me throw this in. Let me throw this into the mix with you all. How quickly <laughs> today they make the, let's say they make the announcement at 345, 4 o'clock, Willie's gone. How quickly do they need to make, how quickly does this post need to be, or do they need to take their time with it? Expeditiously. Mm. Maybe I had this wrapped up by Friday, man. Friday, really? Friday or Monday, man. You know what you need to do. Wow. My thing is, you should have been proactive when you was playing with him. <laughs> yeah. When he initially came and said what he wanted and had his agent, obviously, if you didn't want to raise the level of the salary or draw money in at that point, you should have been looking right there, like, yeah, we probably gonna leave. He gonna probably lose him at the end of the season. But we need a backup plan. Here's the four or five guys. Go yeah. ahead, BJ. Yeah. You would just say here's the four or five guys. Ben we know should have already hey. been in place. And you should already, if you knew you wanted to play around with them, when you play, you need to already be ready for the next move. You don't play around and then put yourself in a position to just look dumb. You know, that's a bad spot. I get what y'all saying expeditiously, and maybe so, because you put yourself in this situation. And if that what you read is totally 100 percent true. You knew months ago that you was gonna possibly be in this position one day coming up soon. Hey, how, how long has she been the AD? Huh? How long has she been the AD? A year. It'll be a year in January. It's, it's almost a year. It's, yeah, about a year. Okay. Yeah. So once again, how you do business? You got to be. I don't understand. Sometimes we just. And I can't. I'm not gonna put this on fair. I guess I just feel the burden of how I just because this is just a, a revolving door. We see it everywhere. We just keep seeing it. We'll be sitting here talking about it in two years about somebody else's school and they coach. And then five years after that, the conversation going to keep going. And it just kind of get overwhelming sometimes, bro, when you look at just, you know, there's people out here that, that love this like we do. And it's just like they don't pay us to see it. But how do we see it? And they paying you to see it. Mm -hmm. <laughs> Am I making sense? Yeah. 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 <laughs> And it's like, that's what be overwhelming me sometimes. Like, damn, you the one supposed to be in the position to know. But, yeah, you got four brothers sitting here on this podcast on YouTube right now that seem to be throwing more ideas out around the table than it seems that the people who get paid are supposed to be doing. They can sit here and brainstorm and come up with ideas. And I'm not saying we can change the world, but, hell, we can start somewhere at somebody HBC, right? We can start in somebody conference, right? And it's like, how are we able to sit here and just have this? And we okay to agree to disagree? Because once again, it's not personal. It's business. We take too much of this stuff. And I think you see that from the administration. You see that mm -hmm. the HBCU is just a little too personal. And when you make things personal, it judge your decision in terms of where you need to move forward, in terms of how you then do business. Because 
you're going off of personally how you feel more so the business action. Well, I don't think it was personal for her to tell him you ain't did nothing. All right. <laughs> that I mean, I can I can assure you the four of us wouldn't have gotten to the point where your rep wouldn't have even come to us because at the beginning of the year, I say, man, it's time to redo this deal. Facts. I'm calling and you in the yeah. office. Remember, and, I'm and, the boss. And if what somebody is, comes to us, I dare so not gonna sit there and say to your representative, you ain't did nothing. You just won nine games three years in a row, but you ain't did that. <laughs> I, will, I will also say this, and this is one of the things that we're starting to see, Scotty, and this is something that's not new. I had an athletic director tell me, a very successful athletic director at HBCU level, so you should always have a short list of four or five guys. I don't care what status your coach, he can be a great fit. If he left today, these are the four or five guys that I'm going to have a conversation with. And you need to be talking to those four or five guys throughout the year. I ain't talking about these are this is a wish list. We don't talk. Hey, we communicate. We we kind of know each other. What we're learning from what from the coaching searches that we've seen, Scotty, is a lot of these ADs, these HBCUs have no plan. We we make a decision that we're going to fire a guy, not retain a guy, let a guy walk and hat and what have you, and, and that's it. And then we we run around like a chicken, you know, with our heads cut off, and there's no plan. And I, and I think that situations like this expose that. Yeah. It continues to go back to strategic planning. When I am in position, because I do this, like what everybody do before 2024. I'm going to give this up. I ain't going to do that new year, new me. You kind of have an idea of the direction that you want to go. But if you truly plan for a new year, and I'm big on strategic planning when you're talking about putting things in place, following not necessarily a script, but you already got a plan in place of where this thing is supposed to be going. You should constantly be seeing a trajectory, right? What is our value? What are we paying for within our value right now? And what are we looking to return from this value that we're willing to invest in, i.e. a head coach? Because if you're going to throw all this money at a head coach, whatever that coach is being paid, he needs to make that back and some by the time his contract is over. That in turn then decides to let me know if his value is good enough, that means the people are buying into what he's doing. Everybody's watching the games. They come into the games. They buy merch. They want to be everything it is possible to be a part of that program. I then have to assess that value. And I think Willie Simmons, when you look at his value, deserves everything he wants and more because of what he's done for FAMU. Now, on the other side of this, we have to strategically plan at HBCUs, period. But the, one of the issues is, and this is what I had this conversation with a guy, it's hard to keep these strategic plans. You know why? Because of the turnover of leadership. Somebody can come in with a five-year plan to help move the institution out, a dean, a, a chancellor, but you have a, a new AD. But you have so much turnover at administration side, you can never really check off what needs to be done. Let's say you bring in a chancellor and he's, his job for the next three years is to fix campus beautification. We let him come in. He's great at that. You fix campus beautification, right? You bring in a new chancellor. His job is simply to worry about academics, right? We just beautified the campus. Now he has a strategic plan where we're going to be working on research dollars and focusing hard on academics. I, I disagree to a certain extent with that because, and 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 BJ, help me out on this one, right? And I'm going to go to the, it's, it's like a, a very specific, rich white man that is in Auburn. He does all the major things. Yeah. In Auburn. yeah. My yeah. thing is, Jim Ryan. It, it comes, it's either to your board of trustees or your major donors who are going to tell you, hey, this is how it runs here. This is how we do it here. And if they care about athletics, they going to tell you, hey, listen, this is how we do it here. I don't know where you do it in such and such, and I don't care about blah, blah, blah. But if you want to keep a job here, this is how we do it here. Good, bad, or indifferent. So I think if you had a board of trustees or a major donors who really cared about certain aspects of the school and how it's ran and done properly, then yes, then you could go, you could, that system stays in place because you know they are the head decision makers. But if that's chaotic, the rest of it is going to be chaotic. Well, in my mind. Therein lies the problem because the very thing that you say is exactly the way it should be. But I can tell you right now at HBCUs, that's not the case. That What you just gave is, is, a, is an example of how things should be ran pretty much at any institution of higher learning. But I can tell you right now from whether it's the president wanting to be 
the big fish on, on, on campus who wants to oversee the, 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 the board at one HBCU because they're all similar in that fashion. There is no – I can use athletics alone because a coach can come in and there is no – this is a tradition of how we do things here and those things are commonplace. That's why it's always – it goes from, from one coach to another or from one AD to another. It's like a yin and a yang. It goes from one end, to the, one end of the spectrum to the other. There is no, as women like to say, there is no consistency. Mm. There is nothing that's tried and true. There is no tradition that stays implied, that stays commonplace. It does not happen. It does not happen. And the reason why it is because, number one, it's ego, as BJ say, it's control. One thing is to be done. I want credit. Then we want, we got clicks of people who want to do things a certain kind of way because they want, uh, they want kudos for who they are and what they do. I mean, so it's it's a multitude of things. To your point, you're absolutely right. But therein lies, I think, one of the other main problems because there is it uh, we have a consistency with the board at every HBCU to get things done so you can have some consistency. So you can't say, hey, at FAMU, this is how we do things and it stays in line. Or, hey, uh, this is how it's done at Jack State. They, it's the same at every HBCU. I hate to say, because we're not a monolith, but a lot of things and how we do things, they can be monolith. And these boards yeah. that get put together sometimes, you got to look at the people who's in position to mix things up at this school, right? To create chaos. Some of this is organized chaos. Some of this is put in position for it to go that way because you think about the position of power to name people on the board. Take Louisiana as for an example. The board get named from the governor. Mm -hmm. You got a Democratic governor. You just may have some people in there. At this time, who may be able to understand your black culture of being calling yourself as an HBCU, we may understand it just a little bit better. I may be willing to just listen to you a little bit. You get a Republican governor, sometimes things don't quite go that way, i.e. Bobby Jindal, where you start to put people in position, and you know that this person is putting these people in position to create chaos on your campus. And this is Louisiana where you realize why you just can't get nothing to go right here. And then mm -hmm. to us on the outside, we're looking like, man, they don't know what they doing. But it's organized chaos. It's been put in position for it to go that way because the people that's higher up know exactly what they're doing. That comes in line when they say things are political to politics. That's yeah. the mm -hmm. bad side to it. It ain't like we choosing our own boards, right? These boards are people we don't typically have no say-so into going after. Now, what you can do is hold. Go ahead. No, 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 no. I was going to hit Zoe, and I wanted BJ to go before. After, I wanted BJ to go after Perry. So Perry, finish your point, BJ, and then I'm going to ask a question to Zoe, and then we're going to give our last uh, few thoughts, and we're going to wrap this up. So okay. Perry, finish your point, then BJ. And I think this is where it lies in the power of being an active alum, and not just somebody who putting how you feel on social media to be expressing. When you deal with entities like this, guess what? When you got the power of alums, and you got these alumni. Uh, chapters all over the state, you start to realize you got political power. That's when you start to hold these board members and whoever elected these board members, when you start holding them accountable, that's the side of it that we haven't figured out as a community that it ain't always about the, the money, but sometimes it's about your vote and what you can control. When you can go to a board member, or you can go to whoever appointed and say, you better put somebody on here good because in my parish, in my county, in my region, I control a lot of votes of folks that look like me that could either be friends or be folk. We don't understand that part. The yeah. other issue is when we deal with these, we don't understand like we have SU day at the Capitol, right? Sounds great to have SU day at the Capitol, right? We bring all the dignitaries and everybody they take pictures in the chambers and we got Southern all over the place. We bring the band and the chili. Jackson does the same thing uh, at the Capitol. All right. When that's over with, they don't give a damn because we ain't politically flexed on them. We didn't show them, even as black folks, do you know how much influence I have over this state when it comes to people that look like me that can ultimately affect what you want to do in terms of whether you want to be a governor, a senator, a state rep, whatever you want to be. We can control that. If we learn that power of the community of being alums and realizing our place, that's when you start changing the politics of the people. Because until then, they know you're not going to do shit but run your mouth. Yeah. Talk about them and, and not vote. Uh, it ain't going to change what they doing at legislation. Because you're not in there. You don't even know what they coming up with. <laughs> that's, that's a good point. That's a good, BJ, what you got? 
Oh uh, man, Paraman, you, you brought up a good point. I, I will say this, man. If you contribute in dollars, it be it, it's amazing how fast people respond to emails, or in certain case, me and Perry, me and Perry, we, we laughed about this one, how people end up with your phone number to give you a call. I got a call from a pom- prominent board member twice in the last month. But I don't just go out, talk, and, and, and do things with my tongue, I mean, with my, my thumbs, Paul's. Um, <laughs> but um, you know what I'm saying. I'm I'm, I'm active with my my checkbook on, on what I what I do. And when you are active with your checkbook and you you're putting your money where your mouth is, people are more apt to respond to your emails and 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 you're you're apt to get calls. Um, uh, trust me, these people know who the donors are. Um, especially at Southern, man, your name comes out and the donor on a roll every year. You know, you go to the, the gala the night before the Bayou Classic in New Orleans, man, we, th- they know, and I'm pretty sure it's like this at every other university. People know if you're just talking, just to say stuff on social media, or you're actually putting the work behind it. And my, my thing is this, fam, you had some opportunities. Great job by Florida a and um, their alumni, their fans, their supporters, right? Great job what you've done in the last 48 hours. Why didn't you been did this to help raise some money for facilities and some of those other things that you needed? It, 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 we shouldn't get to the point where there's a someone's leaving situation. And, and let this be a challenge for everyone else, every other fan base. Let's do this because it's the right thing, not because somebody's getting ready to leave us or getting ready to pack it up. BJ, what kill up? Oh, 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 let me add this because BJ left. I want one important thing too. The difference between you doing what you're doing or, or using your thumb is that there is a face behind your message. So you're on a social media platform. There's a face, and you can actually get a message out as well as what you're giving your your, your dollars. Trust me, I, I've lived it for the past year. You know what I'm saying? So it's it's one thing to be active financially, but then you have a voice that can reach out to other people. And, you're, and that's why I always, like I tell Scotty, people think, oh, there's 100 people watching. Yeah, but hell, you don't know who the 80 are. There's some 80 powerful that could be watching. So it, you're, uh, what you do translates, right? So always the, the thing is, again, go back to what I said. We got to change the way we do things. And yes, we do have to be uh, forward, man. We have to move different. We have to put mm-hmm. our where our mouth is, but we have to be progressive in doing so. Be progressive and not reactionary. That's what it comes down to. Listen, I and I know people are going to probably bash me for this one, but I used to, I couldn't stand people from Bethune telling me, well, we were winning even with the facilities. That's not the point. Like that, that to me is the furthest thing from the point is that yep. how well you were doing in a bad situation. That That, that, that is so dumb. I just I didn't understand the logic of not you didn't have the mindset of hey let's upgrade while we're winning let's let's do this better while we're winning it's no we're winning in spite of we're winning in spite of that's how great we are we're winning in spite of having no hel- helmets with mold well, with no what what that is is we've got I have to say we got brainwashed as a people we fell in love with the get out the mud jargon. Mm-hmm. Yeah, because we fell in love with the whole jargon of getting out the mud that we want to glorify the mud as opposed to, hey, I, I did that yesteryear, right? I did mm-hmm. that time. It shouldn't be a reoccurring thing to consistently brag on that I got it out the mud. I did that three years ago. Now we're doing it a whole different manner. You see what I'm saying? The worst thing, the worst thing that we can do for our programs, and I've seen it at Tuskegee, I've seen that a number of different places. When you win without, and you win for so long without, when you ask for, the first thing that the power will say, why you need it now? We did all this winning. We did all this winning without it. Why you got to have it now? That And we got to get out of that mentality, man, because it literally, we, we, we in 2024, year of our Lord, Skiggy just got turf, just got locker room, still ain't got lights. The worst thing you do, my pops always said it, the worst thing you can do is win without. Because when a new guy comes and he asks to, to get it, the first question is, okay, we won it. First thing, oh, we won without it. Why you need it now? Why? Why? 
What made me laugh about this is y'all made me start thinking when you said get it out the mud. First thing I thought about, boy, we wear it as a badge of honor to have to deal with the bullshit at financial aid and everything else. Right? If you mm -hmm. can survive here, you can survive everywhere. <laughs> but I'm supposed to be okay that y'all ran my ass all around the campus to no <laughs> for the past four, five hours. And I'm supposed to now be okay because you feel like you be your character. Hey, that's your character, though, fear. That's your character. <laughs> right, you see what I'm saying? Like, I didn't come here, but I came for education, man. Y'all done ran me all around this mug for the past it's five years. Everybody in. to tell me to go back to the other person. Hey, yeah. hey, Scotty, hey, Scotty. So you really know what you really heard in this whole little <laughs> past 20 minutes? You heard the real, true definition of is rough in the sweat. <laughs> hey, you, you just got taught how to research. Go research something, but no. <laughs> hey. You know, said so that's the stuff that that's the stuff that kills me because if we're being honest, like to me, I'm I'm gonna be honest. Fam, you is a fam. You during the Willie Simmons era was a was a field house away from being something you don't want to see. Oh yes, sir. You give them a Southern field house. If you give them a Prairie View field house. If you give fam you a a legit field house other than that little daycare center that they got. I'm telling you right now, it's a team you did not want to see because they got everything else. They got a loyal fan base. They got a, a very, uh, a, a, I'll say like a homey feel for their stadium and how they get down. They got a ruckus crowd. They're they got the best student section in the business. Man, got they got the, the best student section in the business. So you just add all that flair and, and some of the most beautiful black women you've ever seen with some of the least amount of clothes in the world. Right? You know what I mean? Six, baby. <laughs> Big 36, if you're on here, say hello. <laughs> <laughs> oh, I, I'm just telling you, the most beautiful black women that wear some of the least amount of clothes in history, right? So, it, fam, you had it all going for them, and they just couldn't see past themselves or just low. We got to put in the thing about it is it's not doing it for tomorrow. It's planning to get there in three years. It's planning to get there in five years of which – if you have a business school, which is project planning, like that's what that's, in that part of business school, yeah. and plan, like I, it doesn't make any sense to me. And let me say this: I got a text from a, a, a person from FAMU, uh, one of the players. It is official. Willie is gone. He just spoke to the team and told them that uh, he will be taking the job at Duke. So that is official. So you ain't got to waste your time going to 345 meeting. If you're a FAMU alum, I just got a text from a player said he's told the team. Do we take a moment of silence or do we clap in congratulations? Which I'm confused right now. Like. <laughs> I know you happy, Zoe. I'll, I know y'all whole spring over there on that other side. Like, you know. like back in power. <laughs> now, man. One time. I mean, he, he, he's and or gets all of y'all except us. Oh, I'm just oh, saying, man. though. Now it seemed like y'all was like, damn, we're going to have to take the back seat to Willie. But oh, now he's gone. Oh, that's what y'all were thinking. We in the West. It's wide open over here. Yeah, and or gets all of y'all except us. It's it's wide open still in the West. Wow. He did all that winning and still wasn't in the championship because of one team. Who was that? I don't know. You tell oh, me. Or oh, 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 one, one coach. Me? Yeah, 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 yeah. One coach. But where one coach. coach. <laughs> 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 uh, yeah. hey. I'm saying, now don't you feel good about yourself again? Hey, don't hey. you feel like it's the power has been handed back to you? Let's like say pass the P. Pass the P's like you used to. You know what I'm saying? Then they just pass it over to you. Let me let me ask down you. There, you gotta be happy, Willie out the way. Tell me for real. Know, it does nothing for me. I'm serious. I, I, I'm gonna be honest. I really do want I'm a bit Johnny Taylor playing all over Jackson right now. <laughs> no, I'm being <laughs> look, I'm in my look, let me let me say this. I didn't want him to leave. I really didn't for obvious reasons. And this is excluding Jackson State. I wanted him to stay because I felt like he would have been the pillar of the coaches in within the conference. But I just hated this whole dynamic of the fact that he wanted to leave is him selling out or, or all this other nonsense. And again, you nor I or anybody else knows the trajectory that he has for his life and his family. And I'm like, whatever he decides to do, because we all tell everybody, BJ, if I'm talking to you off this platform, you tell me that you got an opportunity, I'm going to tell you to a man, bro, do what's best for you and your family. Right. BJ, mm -hmm. best for you and your family. That's right. I would be lying if I didn't say, if I didn't say that. And I hate when outside people want to talk about 
you know, what they want to put off on you, what they want you to do. And again, you I don't know his trajectory. Maybe he felt like I reached the pinnacle as being a head coach. Maybe he wanted to be a head coach again. You know, I we don't know that. But again, uh, I got a chance to get a two hundred thousand dollar raise. Do I sit here and say, "Hey, man, do I want to do that?" Or is it going for, uh, for my family? The, the things that I plan for my family as the pillar and decision maker for my family. It's going to be hard to turn that down. And I just know for me, I would do it. I'm not going to condemn any man, black, white, Indian, Puerto Rican, or Haitian, if that's what he wants to do for his family. I'm not going to do that. I just want to put this out there, right? You know, I'm imaginative. I think I'm crazy. If this like the Les Miles situation when Les left LSU, went and tried something else, then came back. Now, just me being Southern, if Willie Simmons, he leave fam, you go try whatever he trying for a couple of years. It just so happens Southern, like, you know what we looking for. Hey, that Nick Saban, LSU, Alabama, looking real, looking real different. Yeah, and, man. Uh, Willie Simmons is sitting there like, lame. what do he say? Uh, Ta-da! <laughs> yeah. I mean, am I, can I dream? Can I dream? Yeah, it's, 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 out the box. Nah, it's, it's bro, I'd be so happy. You hear me? I will come on here. <laughs> bro, look at here. Let me tell you something. I'm I'm doing all the talking. You see what I'm saying? I'm just saying, like, Ooh. if he goes and try, you know, he makes his money, he stick around somewhere, and maybe it work out, maybe he don't know. He need to go chill somewhere for the next three, four years to get back on track. Hey, I know he didn't talk to me enough on here, and he had to stay film strong, but bro. There's always some room over here with the Jaguars. That's all I'm saying. Let me let me say let me ask you. Uh, I want to ask um, uh, Zoe a question, and then we we have our final thoughts, and we'll get up out of here. Um, so, with the celebration bowl being the ceiling, and you've and you've been the you've been such an advocate about HBCU conference moving up to FBS because I feel like where people are, <clears throat> what what. The structure that we have now is essentially a lower level G5, right? We're, we're all playing for to get to a separate bowl game. Mm -hmm. Why do you think if the jump was able to happen, do you think that more coaches like Willie Simmons stay? Because there's there's multiple opportunities outside of just the celebration bowl. Maybe if he has a really good season of a 12 and one, he has an opportunity to go to a a Chick Fil A bowl. You know, something a little bit more pro prominent. What's your, what's your thoughts on that? I say yes and no. Uh, uh, big picture, I would say no. Um, it's a lot of moving parts to that because again, that's just one level of it. Let, okay, hypothetically speaking, to answer your question. Let's say we move up. There's an FBS HBCU conference. We're on par with the Sun Belt. I'm just throwing something hypothetically out there from a from a success standpoint. And the main thing is what we pay. Now, granted, there's going to be some coaches because of this new format, supposedly with this new playoff, where we may have an alleyway for success, right? But then again, even if we have a, the a FAMU in that conference, right? And let's say FAMU is paying their head coach seven hundred thousand a year, right? Can we have a Willis Simmons stay? Possibility, yes, we can. Would that be consistent across the board? No, because that could, that's going to always be another power five job that can pay more. Again, it comes down to what that coach's yeah. uh, pathway is. Yeah. And that's the thing that we can't answer. So yes and no. Will they, but can there possibly be a coach that would stay? Yes, in that scenario. Is it likely? No. But I mean, but you're going to have some. But the majority, probably not, Scotty, because at the end of the day, uh, even Willie Simmons stays, his contract is year to year. Even if he's even if he signs an extension with family right now, paying him six hundred thousand a year, that's still year to year. Because if he ain't winning, they're gonna fire his ass, and they're gonna be no outrage on none of this platform right here. <laughs> but, and at, at, but at the same token, yeah, if you want a good enough job, and somebody wants to overpay for him, they still can do it. It's a capitalist society, and it's his decision to choose. When it was he wants to do. I just hate this narrative that he has the success and then the opportunity presents itself. He's considering it. He does it. And he's leaving for the white man's money. Nah, green is green. We got to stop doing that. I think it's crazy how people say that, but they take the white man money every day at work. Like they don't work for black owned business. And you know what? I'm tired of us. I'm tired of us expecting people to do stuff that you're not doing yourself. There ain't nobody in the comments. Or well, anybody complaining that wouldn't take a two hundred thousand dollar raise? 
like two hundred thousand dollar raise. You know, much most people don't make two hundred thousand dollars. In a come on, like man, like stop looking, stop looking for someone else to do the revolution for you when you ain't willing to do it yourself. And and another thing, man, we 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 preach white, 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 white. We gotta live in this neighborhood because it's white. Gotta go over here because it's white. Gotta go over here as white. Go over here as white. And if a kid's growing up in that environment from the age from one to eighteen, then all of a sudden you want to go say, but go to an HBCU for school. You done taught me black was negative and second rate my whole life, all the way up until this point. Damn. Damn good point. Damn good point. Or you could be like a kid like me where you just feel like Damn, I'm uncomfortable. Like, you know what I'm saying? Cause I I haven't been around y'all jokers like this. You know what I'm saying? Like all cause I a lot of when I went to class and a lot of the people were we went to all black high schools. I ain't going to an all mm -hmm. black high school. So I ain't even know what it would be like going being around all black people my for the round. Oh, this is different. You know what I'm saying? So but with the experience that I have now and understanding that each campus has its own like certain type of city and feel to it, you can find what's best for you. You know what I'm saying? So mm -hmm. that's my new mentality when it comes to HBCU Perry. I think uh, as I close it out, what I want to say ultimately is it's okay to lose a coach like Willie Simmons because you're going to realize you can't keep up with the Joneses. That's and good. Like, it's, it's, it's just, it won't happen. You just got to kind of wash your hands and know that if you got a successful coach, that's been put in a position like him because it ain't often in this conference somebody leave on their own ability of saying, this is what I want to do. Often right. time, it's like what we saw with Southern, somebody giving you saying, all right, man, what I owe you? You got to go, right? You got to get up out of here. So to be able to have a coach to move up. And once again, this is where I caught the flack for saying it was Southern because they was like, we're not a stepping stone. You want, and we always say, we, we want somebody who wants to be here. This, he got to want to be here. I look at our programs in the instance that we should be what our institutions were founded upon, giving black coaches or whoever, but particularly black coaches, opportunities to build a career to ultimately go on to be successful in life. That was the whole thing about HBCUs, giving black people an opportunity to get an education in which the PWI said you couldn't because you didn't score a certain grade here, a certain grade or an SAT. But then you can come here and take those courses and then before you know it, after a year or two, find yourself in your major. They yeah. call it a diamond in the rough, polishing you up and making you pretty for the rest of the world to see. Then you leave here, spread your wings and create more value for yourself. Because when you do. That, he, he, so, he, damn, he, Perry, in it, isn't it? comes so, on this show every week. And I tell you, man, look, I, I don't know. But what my point is, that's when you go off into the world. That's a day. Yeah. So what you doing, paying by the minute? <laughs> People keep trying to call my damn phone, man, and I got it on Do Not Disturb, and I don't understand. It's just like this constant. And that, and there's somebody who, when they watch the show, for some reason, they think I'm just gonna automatically get off. Supposed to be a new year, new year. Like, they put me like that, but my point is the diamonds in the rough, fellas. Let me get back on track. That was good. Oh man, oh man. <laughs> Listen, it wouldn't man. be a good show if Perry didn't have any uh, interruptions. <laughs> hey, 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 I want to ask y'all a question though. To, to Perry's point, I just thought about this. So, what do we learn from this? As a mm. whole, let me follow me. Let's say, fam, you hire the next coach, and let's say this same next coach. Wins nine to ten games four years in a row, three years in a row. Do we learn the fact of saying, "Hey, he's won ten games two years in a row. He's on a four-year deal." Hey, we saw what happened with Willie Simmons. Let's not go down this road again. Let's restructure his deal. Do you think that happens? Well, this was going to be to my point of saying that I'm okay with being to the next level. You may you're not going to be able to restructure because pretty much what you're going to hire, you almost going to kind of cap yourself out from the moment you hire him anyway. If you want a decent coach to come in in that moment, unless you want a guy, let's just take what Southern did with Terrence Graves, where, you know, we don't have to break the bank to get him, but he's in there to make enough to where we'll be okay. In a situation like fam, you right now, do you feel like they're just going to say we're going to hire somebody just to be okay? 
or are they going to try to build? So that means they may have to write a little bit larger check than what they probably wanted to. And if that's the case, it's okay to be what I tell people consistently what Arkansas State was for years and what it still is. Gus Malzahn, Hugh Freeze, you got Butch Jones there. It became a program nobody wanted to be a part of 25, 30 years ago. Nobody gave a damn about Arkansas State. But what it became was coaches can go there, and it's not a rehabilitation program. It ain't like Alabama. The platform was set of success. Coaches can go there in three or four years and get the call up to move up. And it's okay. Arkansas State know, hey, I can't compete when Auburn coming. I can't compete when Ole Miss calling. I know I can't compete, but I thank you for your services. I yeah. should already yeah. know if I hired you, you should be successful. And if you are successful, somebody's going to come get you. Then I need to already be looking for the next up and coming coach. I well, need to be proactive to well, where this becomes the building block of, I know I can't pay you a lot, but if you up and coming, this is good enough to pay you for you to then take your program and yourself. I, ultimately. I agree. I think, I, think, I think you look at it the same way Dion talks about NIL to the NFL, right? Like if you're if you're mm -hmm. going, if you're in, if you're a, a, a high aspiring coach, yeah, you're trying to go to a group of five. You're trying to be a power five guy. So I agree with you, Perry. Fam, you can look at there as a stepping stone and say, hey, we have we we got that we're gonna have talent. We're gonna be able to recruit. We're on the process of getting new facilities. Come here, make 350, 375. Do your thing and make that jump. You know what I'm saying? And 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 do that. But I do agree with you. If you bring in this new dude, uh, listen, the only person that should get over 400 k is KJ Black just because of where he's coming from. That's it. Mm -hmm. Because you know you got to entice him to come. But no, I don't give a damn if it is Ed Reed, which is probably not. But I don't give a damn if it's Ed Reed. Nobody should be over what Willie Simmons was making. Nobody. It just doesn't even make sense. I, if I was Willie Simmons, I would never even come back to you, Bamas, because you didn't even want to pay me. You want to give this new guy who ain't won nothing four hundred thousand, and you didn't want to give me four hundred. Nah, not doing it. Not Dawson doing it. Dawson Odoms in Southern. Eric Dooley came in waking way ridiculous. more ridiculous than Dawson Odoms. And now and he, ran for it. It, he got that deposit this morning. <laughs> It hit that account this morning. It's, same thing. It. it's the same thing with uh Buddy Pew and um um Chinnis oh, yeah, Bears. Bears. Yeah. They he literally making the same thing Buddy Pew has took him 20 years to get. <laughs> that is asinine to me. Like I get inflation and all that. But Chinnis Berry does not deserve what Buddy Pew was making. And the fact that the matter is, is that Unless you're the to me, unless you're like the hottest guy, which to me, the only way Chinnis Berry is hot to me, no homo, is that he <laughs> he he wins a few games and like 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 Damon Wilson, you win a you go to the quarterfinals. You get what I'm saying? Like you, you're that's, doing that, big that's an outlier up. though, Scotty. That's a, let me tell you why he had leverage on his side because he had other schools bidding for him to pay him. You see what yeah. I'm saying? That's the only difference in that scenario. You're right, and, and otherwise he's used the system to his advantage because he had leverage. All right. So last point, guys, I'm, I'm, and I'm going to toss it around before we get up out of here. FAMU is what in 2024? Perry White starting with you. FAMU is what in 2024? The school or just the program? The, the, the football. The football. Oh. Let me be more specific when it comes to you. <laughs> Football at FAMU in 2024 is what? I just got one. I'll give you one word. Um, uh, I'm going to say chaotic. Chaotic. Because I'm going to say from the coaching, and you know, now Willie Sim is gone. You finna see the chatter of the fan base. Now it's going to be the divide. I want this guy. No, I want that guy. It's going to start creating a mix. Then if guys start hitting the portal, it's going to start creating a conversation. If they come out next year, and, of course, you want somebody to pick up where the last coach had finished. So, you know, you, you just ran through the swag for three straight years, only losing two games. And you, let's say next year you lose four games, five games in the swag. I think it starts to become chaotic a little bit of the conversations. People start, you know, hey, what are we? And I think you back to regular schedule program, fam. You, you realize what life is like after Willie Simmons. This is me personally. and I'm, I'm speaking ahead because we don't know who the next coach. We don't know anything. But just with him leaving, chaotic. BJ? 
I would say to be continued. Um, if, if, if I think if Florida a and is able to make a solid hire, I think you're able to hold uh, guys into the program. I think that you're able to uh, keep pushing forward. Will, will it be to the same success level uh, of a Willie Simmons? Probably not. Um, but what you don't is you don't fall. But you don't. <laughs> I'm just telling them, getting you prepared right now. This tends to happen. They gonna fuck it up. But and, and, and to, to Perry's point, <laughs> usually in this situation, usually in this situation, Damn HBCUs it. have blown this Damn bad. It. I can talk about I can talk about Pete Richardson to Stump Mitchell. I can talk from Billy Joe to whoever came after him. I we 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 have. Literally decades of examples. Comedy usually, everybody after him. Yeah, yeah. Comedy and after. Usually, we fuck this up. But if, <laughs> let's let's just say they they don't. Let's say they don't fuck this up. I think you're able to keep it forward. But if they if they do the same thing that we've seen for decades, not only at FAMU, but you know, FAMU got their own. They did it from decade from decade to decade with these bad hires they made. We've learned that FAMU usually get this wrong. They get it wrong. Demi goes back to being what they were pre Willis Simmons. Mm, that's tough. Zo? It's cold outside, so snakes typically shed their skin. Oh! So, so, so when a snake is going to shed the skin, I see, I see Earl Holmes right now. The greatest example that Ooh, we have. Ooh, not Earl Holmes. Oh! Uh, fam use highs. Fam use highs is not A&T's highs. Look at A&T right now. Look at Auntie. Fam use highs right now. Under Sims is not Auntie. And look at Auntie right now. They got Earl, they got Earl Holmes written all on it. <laughs> he said got Earl Holmes written all over it. Oh my God. Listen. It's cold outside. Snake shit in their skin everywhere. And all them rattles and shit. They getting new rattles right now. <laughs> it's, gonna be, it's, it's gonna be a whole lot of uh snake skin boots on sale. Come you, on. You know what's tough though? It was really what I what I feel my, my little two cents on this is I really feel for family people. They didn't even get like three weeks to really celebrate. To Hold be on, what you say, so what you say, so I said, I don't do <laughs> <laughs> like, they, they haven't even got a full month to celebrate being a celebration boat champion, and now it's they're at the so bottom. You didn't even win the celebration bowl. Oh. It, it so sound familiar though. No, you didn't even win the celebration bowl. Like, oh, but the end result, the end result. I can tell you this. this I, I, but I think what they don't got. I think what years. they. My transition show gonna be better than what theirs gonna be. I do. I. I yeah, that man makes points. I do. I do agree with you on that. I do think your transition. I. I think a lot of Jackson State people are gonna be like, you know, our seven and four is looking real good right now. It's looking real good for a first year head coach. That's all I'm saying. That's all I'm saying. Earl Holmes coming to you real fast. Ooh, not Earl Holmes. Hey, you, Scotty, man. Dude, you don't remember the you don't remember the Earl Holmes era at FAMU, right? No. Oh man. So so Scotty. So Earl Holmes played with FAMU. He bad boy when he played at FAMU. Got drafted, played in the league, had connections, this and other. He was terrible. I think he may have, I think he never won over three games in the season. That last year, they said that they were going to fire him. This was before the Florida Classic, right? News had broke. And there was backlash. For like, God damn, you do Earl Holmes like that. Like, no, it was a homecoming. Homecoming is always homecoming. I damn, you do Earl Holmes like that. So they pulled it back and didn't fire him. He went and got his ass whooped, and then they fired him in <laughs> anyway. I'm like, you could have been dead that. You could have been dead that. <laughs> It was gonna be the same. It was bad. It was bad. It was bad. <laughs> oh my gosh, man! It's it's about to be a straight exodus at FAMU. I, I I listen. I'm gonna be honest with you. I don't have much faith in Tiffany. I will see what she does. I'm not saying she can't get it done, but I just I I hope she really. I hope she really got her stuff together because it's about I got to be a whole lot of snakes on the plane leaving Tallahassee. <laughs> Hey, they made more Earl Holmes, Alex Woods, and, and uh, Core Fuller hires than they made Willis Simmons hire. Let me ask y'all, when you look at the conference as a whole right now, I mean, it just seemed like a few years ago, we had a lot of excitement. 
I'm not that excited about this. Me asking thing. to kick our ass. I'm, I'm gonna be honest with you. Me asking to kick our ass. Yeah, like, like you look at the projection of the poll. Bro, it's gonna get rough. Yeah, yeah. Am I? I mean, am I like? Am I making like when I look around and I just like I was on the high when I looked around. It just looked like we were on par to go to some good places. Hugh Jackson, Dion, Eric Dooley, Willie Simmons, Connell Maynard. He changed oh, man, quick. Class, but Kenny was doing that Texas Southern. Fred McNair. I was kind of like, oh shit, like. <laughs> We we got something now. We look at where we had Clarence McKinney going. Fred McNair out in the cold, <laughs> wandering. Uh, uh, Connell Maynard just under in the doghouse right now. Uh, Willie Simmons just left, and it's just like, damn. We looking around, and I'm looking at the Miak, Trey Oliver, mm. Dennis Berry. Mm. Uh, what's your boy, uh, Damon? Damon uh, Wilson. Damon Wilson. Wilson. I still believe in Dawson Odoms. I think what we saw this year, there's gonna be something to build off next year. Boy, what you see? Don't girl. forget my man at Howard. Don't forget my man at Howard. Yeah, Larry, Larry Scott. Yeah. Larry Scott. Scotty don't believe in it's your boy at Delaware State. Oh, Leo. Uh, that Bama shouldn't even been. Man, don't even get me started. Don't don't even get me started on that Bama. That Bama shouldn't even got the hey, job. No, no question, Scott. Speaking of Earl Holmes. <laughs> so all the shirts that they had by family saving the swag, and they couldn't save themselves. <laughs> it was a momentarily thing. You got it, though. You just got to give them for the moment. And, and this is the bad thing about fam. This is the bad thing about fam. They didn't never enjoy their success. And and this is something I, that I tell people. Don't allow people to rob you of your, your happiness. So many of y'all are so caught up when you achieve something. The first thing you do is run the social media and see who told you you couldn't do it or who counted you out. So you can say, I, I told you so. So at that point, you ain't even enjoying your success. You just enjoying telling people, you know what I'm saying? You told them so. And then now the success just walked out the door. You ain't even get a chance to enjoy it. Oh and neither. Hey, y'all. And guess familiar. what? That the sounds Miak, so familiar. The MEAC Swag Challenge next year is Florida and them in North. Damn, I can't even. Oh. I might pick Norfolk State guys. No. <laughs> y'all, you didn't see where I was going. Did you? Man. Ah. It, was, it was all. It, listen, do you know how that song? I think it was like it was all good a week ago. It was all good <laughs> just a week ago. I just want to put that out there so you know where I'm coming at the beginning of the season. Oh, you and, 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 know and, and what direction and, I'm going with. In the words of the great urban philosopher, Lauren Hill, it could all be so simple, but you'd rather make it hard. <laughs> you'd rather make it hard. You'd rather make it hard. <laughs> I tell you what, I'm going to redeem it. How this coupon I'll spring. <laughs> Dang. God, no, nah, that's gonna be. Nah, you weren't ready for that one, was you? That's gonna be. That's gonna be a tough one. I, I feel. Oh, I'm gonna feel happy oh. fans, but you know, hey, listen, you gotta listen. Well, I think my grandfather used to say the. Uh, my grandma used to say like the uh, the cows come home the. the Chickens just come home to crow. Some some chickens come home to roost. Yeah, chickens come home to roost. Some some. I'm like, hey, good, hey, boy, God, hey, hey, Scotty, my dad just texted. The ease is back open for business. <laughs> hey, how bad would it be if Connell Manor does not put his team in position to find? I mean, you had the reign of all corn. He was knocking at the door. You had the reign of Jackson State. Now you had the reign of FAMU. And he is yet to be able to peek through at Alabama a and Listen, if he, can't, if he can't be competitive to finish first in this division, Without Will, oh man, no, you gotta fire him, bro. I don't give a damn. I don't care what his payout is. You got to you fire, fire him. You can't be you gotta fire. This in this East, come on, bro. What are we doing? You gotta. It fire. just seemed like if I, he's always had these roadblocks, and now it's like coach gone here, coach gone there, coach gone. And now what you yeah. gonna do? Fred McNair gone, who whooped your ass? Uh, Deion Sanders gone, Willie Simmons gone. So here you are now. Yep. Aiden Robinson still at Mont still in Montgomery though. Yeah, he can't for some reason he can't beat him. Eddie was covering his games, wasn't he? Or selling houses around him. He wasn't even calling. <laughs> <laughs> he wasn't even coaching. How long Connell Maynard's been around for a while now, hadn't he? he yeah, around. man. Yeah. What year know. he came into the swag? What? He came in 2018. Coming from he's the longest. Same, right? He's the longest. Yeah. He came from Hampton. Hampton. So he went, yeah. So he went to Salem State. 
he might need to go back to Winston Salem State. I think that, you know, one of those situations where you might need to go back to where your word all started. Oh, where on the street is uh Winston Salem State's OC just became the OC at Alabama State. So that's where on the street. Don't know if it's confirmed or not. But yeah, Alabama State just hired the Winston Salem State uh OC. So just wanted to. And so I know they frying fish listening to Johnny Tate all over Mississippi this morning Ooh. today because we breaking the news. Willie Simmons is gone. And I know when you leave off of here, you're going to be Hey, I'm going up. Hey. Hey, they don't play this in Florida. <laughs> they don't play that in Florida. They don't play that in Florida. Now, Mississippi feeling good today. They like, yes, we didn't have yeah. to last that long. We didn't have to deal with them that long. One come I can hear the King George playing from here. Hey, I was just loving BJ. I had it loaded up. I had it loaded up. Yeah. Have one woman, gotta have three. Let's go. Woman just don't hold me down. Don't play in Florida, baby. <laughs> Yeah. yeah. And I gotta at least have one more on the side. It really don't give up. So if you wanna leave, baby. Hey. Yeah. Hey man. It's one thing. Have to play Black Street. Oh man. Y'all, y'all doing this. Guy. I cannot wait to get y'all next man's meeting. I, I already know y'all finna be like, oh yeah, the return to dominance. <laughs> Here we are, back on top of the mountain again. They gonna have orders at the next mass meeting. Is this, this right? They gonna step up for this. Hey, listen, hey, listen, they listen that. Hey, that match, that next mass meeting about to be crazy. Do you hear? <laughs> and they gonna be very disrespectful. There's nobody I mean, give a damn hey, about man, Willie Simmons. You know anyway. what? It's amazing what happens when you lose one time to a coach that they're beating everybody. I mean, <laughs> I mean tell it, man. We be, I'm just saying. I'm just saying. You ladies like they look at you. It was really like, going to turn Willie going with it. I mean, because he <laughs> mucked it up with his head. I'm just saying. Hey, listen. You know, those, those, those Jack Snake fans, they be like, hey, you lucky. And they lucky they don't got to see us in the OBC because it was going to be different this year. It was going to be different. Well, yeah, yeah. Well, we'll, see. we'll see. Hey, man, listen, guys. I appreciate y'all's time. Uh, you guys go enjoy your new year. Appreciate y'all for jumping on, talking about. You can you can find these fellas on all their platforms. Zone, the 1400, and the Tiger Talk. BJ Jones on HBCU Nightly on Twitter. My man and uh, and it's Dr. Cavill as well as HBCU Game Day. Pray White, you can find them on pretty much everything. Jaguar Journal. Let's <laughs> wax the army. I told you. <laughs> Jaguar Journal. Uh, you can find him here on Outspoken. You can find him at. Uh, he does like shows with on the uh, sports on the yard after sports. shows after shows after shows. Yeah, yeah. He, he, Sometimes he I hop over on the fourteen hundred club if they don't welcome me back. He, he's down on the. He does the bingo yard uh, down in Baton Rouge. I mean, you just go everywhere you find him. Hey, man, but listen, that's been our time, man. Listen, until next time, you know what I'm going to do. I'm going to holler. God bless. Oh, yeah.